Transpiration is one of those topics which is often hidden in other chapters, so this is all to do with plant structure and transport in plants. It's particularly important you could get a question on it in your exams, so this video is just highlighting areas to revise, all part of Leaving Cert Biology. Transpiration is the loss of water vapour from the surface of plants, mostly the leaves. So it's really the evaporation of water. And again, this is mostly taking place from the leaves or the aerial parts of the plant. This evaporation of water takes place through little tiny pores in the leaf known as the stomata. Stomata are literally these tiny holes on the leaves and the opening and closing of the stomata is controlled by particular cells known as guard cells. So how do these guard cells function? What makes the guard cells close the stomata? Osmosis is the key to understanding how the guard cells open and close the stomata. So when the stomata are open, the guard cells are turgid and buckle outwards. When they lose water by osmosis, they become flaccid and this closes the stomata. So osmosis is the process by which they become turgid or flaccid. But what makes this happen? What drives the osmosis? Well, one factor is the internal concentration of carbon dioxide inside the leaf. So when there is high CO2 inside the leaf, this is mostly at night, the stomata are closed and when it's low, they open. Another factor is when there is very high temperatures, the stomata close. And this is all down to abscisic acid, this plant growth regulator a chemical produced by plants. Abscisic acid is known as the plant stress hormone. It's produced in many areas of the plant. For example, it's produced in the roots and it can also be produced in the leaves. Abscisic acid is produced in times of drought. This would ensure that the stomata are closed and so therefore water loss is minimised. Sometimes the exam questions connected with transpiration are to do with the rate of transpiration and environmental conditions. So transpiration rate increases when there is dry or low humidity in the atmosphere. So dry weather, low humidity. When it's breezy weather, you'll get an increase in the rate of transpiration. And when it's warm and sunny, the rate of transpiration will increase. So just be mindful that you might get a graph and be able to link this information to the graph. The structure of the leaf is a very important diagram and you're often asked how is the leaf adapted to ensure that water loss due to transpiration is controlled. Well first of all there is a waxy cuticle layer, a transparent layer on the top of the leaf which is quite thick. There is also a waxy cuticle layer on the undersurface but it's not as thick. It's also important to note that most of the stomata, they're greatest in number on the undersurface of the leaf. So this is really important. There are stomata on the top of the leaf, but not as many as there is on the undersurface. And remember, the undersurface will not get direct sunlight. Ensuring that there's always a continuous flow of water from root to leaf is very important. This is known as the transpiration stream, a continuous column of water in the plant from root to leaves. This is important for photosynthesis. Water enters plants at the roots where it's absorbed by the process of osmosis and it moves from cell to cell until it enters xylem, that vascular tissue, at the centre of the root and it's in xylem that water is transported. There are xylem tracheids and xylem vessels and these form long, hollow, continuous tubes from root to leaf. Remember that xylem is dead and it's also reinforced with lignin. So make sure that you can draw and label diagrams of xylem and phloem. Learn all the plant structure diagrams, very important for the exams. And the root is another important example. So water enters the plant through the root and the root hairs or the presence of these root hairs will greatly increase the surface area for the absorption of water. So it's really important that you can label this diagram. There are also root zones which are often asked to mark in on diagrams. The first one is the zone of protection. Look for where the root cap is. Second you have the zone of cell production. Look for where the meristem is. Then you have the zone of cell elongation just above it and then you have the zone of differentiation. Look for the root hairs. Everything we've discussed so far is all part of the broader topic of water transport in plants. And this is really important to be able to discuss. First of all, you must state that Dixon and Jolie, two scientists from Trinity College in Dublin, put forward the cohesion tension model. This is a very important model. It explains how water is transported upwards in a plant against the force of gravity. But before you discuss that in an answer, you must give an account of root pressure. Just state what it is and then go on to the cohesion tension model and use the letters T A C T to help you structure your answer. You must mention transpiration, adhesion, cohesion and tension. But before you start mentioning those, always have an account of root pressure. This is a very important topic, so I would spend time revising this, particularly for your exams. 
So what are the exam questions like? What could I be asked? That's a good question to consider when you're getting ready to revise. Well, make sure at minimum you know the adaptations of the leaf, a good diagram of the leaf, stomatal opening and closing, water transport, particularly vascular tissues. Make sure you know about the root and how to draw it and label it and the root zones and the cohesion tension model. So the best of luck with all of that revision, all you can do is begin. Use the videos, use your textbook, use your notes, do past papers. Good luck.